All right, guys. Boy, funny thing. I just got done recording the audio for this uh, study guide. <clears throat> got completely done with it. And I had not plugged in the microphone. So here we go again. <laughs> Engine fundamentals test study guide. All right. So we go through this in question format, sort of like, all right. So the blank is what forms the basic foundation on which the whole engine is built. Why? That is the block. Block is what builds the uh, basic formation or the basic foundation, also uh, referred to as the bottom end. Okay. It has houses the crankshaft, and the crankshaft it turns up and down motion or reciprocating motion into rotating motion all right up and down into rotating this crankshaft to do that in the four stroke cycle remember you got two upstrokes and two downstrokes so that means the crankshaft's going to rotate yes you're right two times okay the term blow by if you were to see this in a question I would want you to uh, veer towards uh, worn compression rings on a piston okay we'll talk about rings a little bit more here in a bit but the compression rings which help seal up the uh, the cylinder the, the piston to the cylinder wall those are worn and we're going to lose compression uh, with with blow by so three different timing components now two of these have the same function okay um, but there's more to timing than just these three but these are the three we're going to focus on uh, for our class so you're going to have a timing chain or timing belt okay you're not going to have both you're going to have one or the other but with both you would have timing gears okay so timing chains timing belts timing gears those are the three main components of the timing um, so back to the piston um, what are uh, placed around the piston to help seal the cylinder well if you look up there if you got worn compression rings on a piston then it would obviously be piston rings are placed around the piston okay all right all right so uh right up the top there the block the bottom end um what do we call the top end why that's the cylinder head itself it bolts to the deck of the block or the top of the block and houses the valves a lot of other stuff too but mainly Okay, now we're going to spend a little time on single overhead cam versus dual overhead cam. Okay, and I want you to pay very close attention because I get somebody does this every single time we have these quizzes and tests. All right, so the number of camshafts is in a single overhead or a dual overhead cam engine. Direct, directly related to how many heads are in the engine itself okay that would be example here the following an inline engine we'll mainly focus on the four cylinder um, you, you would you could have an inline six cylinder um, but there would only be one head okay so there can only be one camshaft or two camshafts depending on single overhead or dual overhead cam. Okay, so in a V-block, and our examples here, V6, V8, V10, V12, there's going to be a head on each section of that V. Okay, um, so there'll be two heads. So the number of camshafts for a single overhead cam V-type engine would be two one in each head and if it were a dual overhead camshaft it would then be four two in each head okay 
there are only one or two heads for an engine block. They have not created uh, the three-headed monster yet. Um, it's going to be one head or two heads. That's it. All right. So let's go through this. How many camshafts? These are all single overhead cam. All right. So one cam per head. Four cylinder is going to have one camshaft. A V6, there are two heads. It's single overhead cam. That means we'd have, you got it, two. All right. A V8, there are two heads. All right. Single overhead cam means, yes, two camshafts. So, Single overhead cam is going to mean one camshaft per cylinder, or I'm sorry, uh, per cylinder head. Um, a V engine is going to have two cylinders, so you're going to have two camshafts. A V8, two cylinders, so two two camshafts, not six, you know, not eight. That that number is the number of cylinders, not the number of camshafts. All right. So respectively, in dual overhead cam. Again, four cylinder only has one head, but it's going to have two camshafts. So, respectively, there, V6, two heads, two camshafts in each head means four. A V8, same thing. There's two heads and two, cam two camshafts in each head. So, there you would have four. So these are the only numbers in regards to uh, single overhead or dual overhead camshafts that there can be. All right. Um, SOHC is one or two. DOHC is two or four. All right. Overhead valve um, engine, the, the camshaft is in the block. So the push rods, we'll talk some more about push rods in a bit would uh, push up and push the rocker arms opening and closing the valves okay so there we have it right, good to go all right the four strokes of an internal combustion engine are you guys actually did pretty good most of you on this um, intake stroke compression stroke all right, intake stroke, the piston's moving down. Compression stroke, the piston's moving back up. Power stroke, the, the uh, explosion happens, driving the piston back down. And then the exhaust, the, the piston is coming back up. So you got uh, down, up, down, up. Okay, valves. I talked earlier. Um, about into uh, about the camshafts. Th their main job is to open and close those valves. Um, there's only two types of valves: an intake valve and an exhaust valve. Okay. Each valve. Now there may be more than you know. Each cylinder may have two intakes and two exhausts. To a total of four valves, but there's only an intake and exhaust. Okay, that there's not going to be four different uh, functioning valves. So each valve or each side, the intake or exhaust, is going to open one time during the four-stroke cycle. Okay, um, so intake valve opens during the intake stroke, then your compression stroke. Both valves are closed, so we can compress that into a very tight space. Um, power stroke, both are closed because now we have the explosion. Um, and then in the last stroke, the exhaust stroke, the exhaust valve opens and lets the um, burnt gas and, and uh, yeah, lets it out. So, okay. All right. All right, so we talked about timing, having sprockets or gears. 
your crankshaft is going to have a sprocket. Your camshaft is going to have a sprocket. Okay, so the crankshaft sprocket, um, it's it's down, you know, in the in the lower in the bottom end. It's going to be smaller than the camshaft sprocket, and the camshaft will turn at, you guessed it, one half the speed. So the crankshaft going to rotate twice during a four stroke the the entire cycle and the camshaft would then rotate once okay all right main function of the camshaft opens and closes the valves um, this next one and I, I sometimes I get people confused but I hopefully excuse me hopefully I'll uh, be a little clearer on this okay the valve springs all right so the camshaft has egg-shaped lobes on it and when those rotate around they're going to push that uh, uh, they're going to push that valve open uh, or the valve assembly all right and then in conjunction with the valve springs when that lobe then passes off it's going to close the valve after they've been opened so the camshaft opens and closes the function of the valve spring is is basically an assist but they close the valves after they've been opened okay so we're going to go back to rings how many rings does a standard piston have remember i said it yeah i think i said it it can have more, sometimes four, but all, all uh, standard pistons are going to have three rings. All right, you're going to have your first ring, your your main, your compression ring, your second uh, relief or secondary. Um, both of those are compression, and then the third ring from the top uh, is the oil ring. Okay. So the first ring is, yes, you guys are listening, a compression ring. Okay, so what you really want to know is that first ring is a compression. The oil ring is the third one. I'm not really going to uh, throw you questions in there on the second ring. Okay, except for I want you to know that there's three. All right, so here are these guys. These are the now there's a whole lot more going on in an engine but these are the four that that we focused on for our class so we have the engine block itself the crankshaft and the connecting rod and finally the pistons so you should identify all four of these as bottom end components okay all right respectively the top end all right um there's also a whole lot going on in there but these four are what we focus on here we have the head itself all right and in there is the camshaft you got your valves or valve assemblies and these little guys over here those are rocker arms okay um, remember a little bit ago I talked about push rods and I'll talk a little bit more about push rods here in a second but in an overhead valve engine your push rod would be pushing up through a, a passage and um, causing those rockers to rock and do the same thing as as an overhead uh, cam engine so all right, back to valves. So, there's only two kind of valves, <clears throat> intake and exhaust. Which one do you think is bigger? Yes, you're right, the intake valve. And this is, this is true because you just think about it from breathing. We always like to take in as much oxygen as we can, all right? If you're having shortness of breath, um, your body's not functioning properly. Um, so, we want to think about that bring them in as much as we can okay <clears throat> just got done talking about uh, push rods and connecting rods the, the difference between the two is in 
the question itself all right a connecting rod connects the piston to the crankshaft a push rod pushes the rocker arms so if you if you can remember connecting rod it connects push rod it pushes all right so which is cheaper timing belt or timing chain if you watch the videos um, you should know this to be the timing belt uh, in um, as far as lasting longer which one why that's going to be the timing chain okay so timing belt is is cheaper um, and the timing chain will they're more expensive but they uh, you know, a lot of times the timing chain uh, will last the life of a vehicle unless you know there's a flaw in it or something and it breaks but um, anyway so last one on this water jackets okay this is in this will be in the test all right um, water jackets are passages uh, that allow water to circulate through the block and heads to cool the engine okay so you're gonna have passages in which oil flows through there and you have passages in which um, water passes through there as well or um, yes okay so please take your time guys watch this video again write this stuff down um, you, you should be able to pause it and, and write down the answer so you you got them right there um, this is uh, you know I'm, I'm not there sitting there watching to take the test so um, you can do this all right good luck and we will begin maintenance here shortly <laughs>